And she was like, who? And he was like, ah. And we was like, what? And she was like, who? And he was like, ah. And we was like, what? Black man, go, go. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Just Ask Joey. I'm your host, Joey. This is the only place on the internet where you will find a former idiot answering your questions to help you get over or under or past or through or around or whatever your idiocy. When I was going through my stuff, I didn't really have a place to to ask questions. There didn't seem to be many resources or there were resources, but they didn't seem like it fit me. So this is a place where you can ask specific questions about you, about your situation and what you need help with. And hopefully I can answer them. And if I can't answer them, I'll tell you. This is a, this is about honesty. This isn't about just blowing smoke up people's butt. So today I'm excited to be able to answer a question that, that is, one is a huge question and one it affects a ton of people. And it allows me to get uh, a, little, a little more science-y. And I am absolutely not a doctor, but my brother is. So that kind of counts, right? Like in some countries. You know, practically the same, my brother, me, whatever. I'm practically a doctor. Anyways, so the question today has to do with stress and has to do with how you handle stress, especially when you feel that the stress is affecting your your life as a whole, affecting you physically. It's obviously going to affect you mentally. It's stress. It's That's kind of where it starts is in your head. But what happens when it starts affecting you physically? So... I'm going to give you some a little bit of background on stress, kind of what it does to your body, and then give you a couple simple steps. And remember, simple is not easy. You still have to do them. But give you a couple simple steps in order to handle your stress and and uh, really control it because you're in control. You're in control more than you know, especially more than you feel like now. So once you kind of get a grasp on what you can do to mitigate the stress and control it, things are going to get a lot easier. So have some comfort in that. So stress is unavoidable. I think we can all, we all know that it's, it's not something that will ever go away. And I know that in itself is not comforting, but it's comforting is you, is you can control it. And our body was set up to have a stress response to life and death situations. Remember like millions of years ago, we're running away from saber-toothed tigers. So our response is to put ourselves in the best position for survival. Now, are we having to run away from saber-toothed tigers today? No. I mean, you had that little kid that fell in the gorilla pen yesterday or the day before. I'm sure he was pretty pretty scared. I know his parents were. I'm sure his parents had their fight-or-flight response on pretty hardcore then. But we don't we don't really deal with life and death situations as much today as we as we did millions of years ago as our um, as our bodies and minds were developing. But because evolution is a process and sometimes it's you know a little slow, we uh, we still have the same response. So when we get into a stressful situation, let's say like at work, what our body does when we're stressed out is it releases. And I have to look at my notes because this is, a, this is a big one. So if I'm not looking right at you, that's why I'm looking at my notes. Um, what stress does to you is it releases adrenaline, uh, neoreprenephrine, and cortisol. Now what that does is that allows your body to have heightened awareness. It allows your body to uh, send more blood to your brain so you're processing faster. And it also allows you to have increased heart rate so you can, I mean, essentially, so you can run away. But it also it also cuts off things that you're not using at that time, things that are not necessary for you really to survive. Because remember, this is a fight or flight response. So your body is releasing chemicals into your system that that enhances some stuff, but cuts off others. So things like reproduction, things like immunity, things like digestion, things like growth, those things get cut off because your body's saying, holy crap, we got to survive this. How are we going to survive this? Send blood here, 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 increase heart rate, and go. But we don't need this, we don't need this, we don't need this, everything out. 
Have you seen those movies where, where, uh, what did I just watch the other day? I watched um, Everest when the helicopter had to get up to an altitude that it really couldn't handle and it couldn't it couldn't land because it couldn't get up too high. What did they do? They dumped all the crap that they didn't need so they could land. That's basically what your body's doing. Your body is the helicopter on Everest. It's it's holding all the stuff that it that it needs at the time and dumping everything else, which is great if you are in a burning building, if you're in a car accident, if you're in a real life and death situation. And it's really not a terrible thing if it happens every once in a while. I mean, really, this is literally will save your life. Fight or flight, running away, doing stuff that that your body, you didn't even know you were capable of doing. The issue comes in when it's long term, when it's every day, or when it's for an extended period of time, a week, a month, a couple weeks. That's when it really starts, it really starts doing damage to your body and to and mentally. And and the the mind is kind of a funny thing because you have um you know you have your brain on one side and you have your body on the other well your brain sends signals to your body in the same way that your body sends signals back to your brain so you may be so your brain will freak out send signals to your body your muscles tighten your heart rate increases your cortisol shoots through the roof but then once you're in this inflamed state you're sending this back to your brain so your brain still thinks you're in in a fight or flight response, high stress situations. And it just, it keeps going around and around in a circle and it does, it does a number on your body. So amazing in certain situations, horrible in other situations. It's kind of like everything, everything in moderation, right? Stress is definitely one of them. So it can be very good, but it can be very bad. Um, So long-term effects, we, you know, we talked about some of them. It's basically because this is a, a, a central nervous system, um, switch that's going off, um, too much stress and controlling everything, too much stress is, it leads to depression, insomnia, anxiety, hypertension, overeating, undereating, digestive problems. So even if you are eating, your body's not breaking down the food correctly. It's not going to the right places, may not be digesting it at all. So even if you're not, you know, puking because of your anxiety or, you know, pooping because of your anxiety, it still is not, it's not um, maximizing the use of the nutrients and stuff that you're putting in your body. Um, your muscles tighten up. Tight muscles lead to shoulder pain, lead to back pain, lead to headaches. You have a lowered immune system and reproductive issues. So see what I mean? Like stress can cause like like major issues. And and if you're already noticing these physical issues, you're in the right place because this is these steps are gonna we're gonna really help you kind of get over it what it is that you're going through. Um, and since we already know we can't avoid stress, what you want to do is you want to mitigate stress. You want to first not add to the stress because remember your body and your mind work together. Your body sends signals to your mind. Your mind sends signals to your body. So what you, so what we're trying to do here is your mind's here sending signals to your body that you're stressed out. Now, what you don't want to do is have your body send signals back to your mind that is stressed out. So there's certain things that that you can do that don't add to the stress. So that's what we have to do. We have to make sure in our lives we're not adding to the stress first, and then we can deal with handling the actual stress that that we can't avoid. So huge, huge is inflammatory foods. Huge is diet. So you can put stuff in your system that will basically tell your brain that you're stressed out because they're inflammatory. So you're, you, you know, you have you've inflamed your joints, your your stomach, your digestive system, your brain. Everything's inflamed, sending signals to your to your brain from your body that you're stressed out. So what you do, don't eat inflammatory foods. That is a huge thing. Um, trans fats, I think we we all know that, right? Trans fats, sugar, we all know. White bread, which basically just breaks down into sugar, anyways. Alcohol. I know alcohol is fun and all. You can do it in moderation. Same thing. Moderation's okay. But just know that you drink too much alcohol, your your body's inflamed. And your body's inflamed, your mind's sending signals to to uh you're freaked out. So you're sending signals to your brain to freak out. So these are foods that are sending signals to your brain to freak out on top of the fact that you're already freaking out, that you're already stressed out. So 
bare minimum is where we're going here. Um, other things to avoid, milk and other dairy products, uh, MSG, we, I think we all, we all know MSG, right? Um, gluten, which is basically all the other kinds of bread. So just avoid breads kind of all together. Um, canola oil and other cheap, crappy kind of vegetable oils. And this is the issue with going out to eat. For the most part, unless you're in like a really high-end restaurant that's using like grass-fed butter and high-quality oils, if you go out to eat, no matter what you get, even if you get something healthy to eat at that restaurant, they're going to cook it in, in crap. So which, so you get some canola oil or some cheap other vegetable oil, and your body's going to be inflamed even if you had something healthy. So try to avoid going out, or unless you got a couple bucks, go to some high-end places and, and you'll be okay. Um, artificial additives, we all know that. Eat, eat stuff that's natural. And uh, processed, processed grains, uh, like white flour, things like that. So avoid those things. And the good thing is it's all stuff you should be avoiding anyway. So not only are you going to de-stress, you're probably going to lose a couple pounds. You're going to feel a hell of a lot better because your body's healthier, which will then make your mind healthier and vice versa and everything. So this is kind of a win-win for everybody. Um, there are inflammatory reducing foods. And these are things that, that I eat all the time. Because I want, I know that that in order for me to do what I want to do, I have to be on top of my game. You have to be on top of your game too. So we already we eliminated these foods that are inflammatory. Now we're going to add some foods that are that are um, uh, anti-inflammatory. So uh, fatty fish, salmon's, salmon's, salmon, <laughs> sardines, tuna. Um, I've heard a lot of people eating uh, like oysters. I mean, I don't know how many oysters you can eat. I'm assuming oysters in a can. You're not going to sit there with like a tray of oysters every 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 lunch. Um, dark leafy greens, spinach, kale, um, shard, mustard greens, uh, nuts, almonds, walnuts, which is actually really good for a snack. So if you're really trying to eat healthy and part of your problem is you work, let's say like a crazy 12-hour shift, you're going to need snacks. You're going to need healthy stuff. Well, you're probably not going to have healthy stuff wherever you are unless you work at 12 hour shift at a health food store, which I don't know why anybody would do that, but, um, carry on almonds and nuts with you. It's a great snack. You just do like a little handful. It actually helps you get through, um, a lot of the day without having to sit down and eat like a big meal. So, so if you're on the go, you have kind of a crazy job, crazy shift, pop in a couple almonds, a couple walnuts, and you're good to go and very healthy for you. And don't get the kind that are baked and covered in salt and, and, whatever other crap they put on it like get raw almonds get raw walnuts don't get don't get stuff that's like cooked and candied and all that other crap you know better than that um eat uh, colorful vegetables um stuff like like uh cauliflower which is not that colorful but cauliflower brussels sprouts um red peppers sweet peppers things like that like mix up the colors all those different colors and all those different vegetables and textures and stuff is really good for your system um legumes, black beans, pinto beans. And again, we're not cooking them in lard. We're not cooking them in what other crap to make them taste better. Just boil them and eat them. That's it. Stop. You know, you know the stuff you shouldn't add to it. Um, beets. Beets are amazing for you. They taste literally, it tastes like you're eating dirt. So I, I don't suggest eating them like an apple and just taking a bite out of them. Uh, juice them. Juice them and drink them. And then Watch your teeth turn red, and then keep in mind, too, that a couple hours later, your pee will be bright pink, so don't freak out. You don't have cancer or something. You're just peeing beets. Um, one thing that's really good about beets also, if you are into working out, it um, expands your capillaries, which allows you to push through more uh, more blood, which allows you to perform it at a higher rate. Like You can actually, the mornings that I work out where I have beets in the morning, I can feel my, uh, I can hear, I can feel my cardiovascular system working better. It's, it's pretty incredible. Um, ginger, ginger is amazing for your digestive system. And we'll talk a little bit more about, um, uh, how your gut really does affect, affect your brain, but ginger is fantastic for your digestive system. It's, um, just the raw ginger, just cut it up and eat it. It's, it's spicy, I guess is the best term to describe it but it's fantastic for your gut um turmeric i put turmeric in all of my smoothies because it's actually a natural replacement 
for like Advil. Like Advil is tough on your system as it's going through. So um, turmeric is a natural uh, anti-inflammatory. You add a little pepper to it and it actually increases the its anti-inflammatory nature and, and works even better in your system. So turmeric, they kind of look like... Uh, uh, they look like caterpillars, actually. So that's what my daughter calls them when she picks them out at the store for me. Like, they look like little orange caterpillars. Um, garlic, olive oil. Um, if you need something a little sweet, because we haven't mentioned anything sweet, if you're going to eat fruit, eat eat uh, mostly eat berries, blueberries, raspberries, strawberries. Um, if you're going to eat a banana, have a banana that's a little on the green side. That's it's better for you. Um, so when you get your gut right your body's able to release the proper chemicals. Because you would think, like again, remember what I said, body and mind are working together here. You would think that everything gets released from your, from your brain. Well, really what's going on is your brain is telling your gut or your gut's telling your brain, hey, everything's cool, release this. So one thing that your gut releases, and if you're stressed out, I'm assuming you're probably not in the happiest state, your gut releases a lot of serotonin. So if your gut is filled with crap, and it's not able to release those chemicals into your system, guess what? You're probably not going to be in a great mood. So the better you eat, the better your gut, get your gut health strong, and you end up releasing more serotonin into your system, which will then help you um, be happier. And that's kind of what we're doing. So I'm assuming that the happiness and the stress would be kind of like this. You know, more happy, less stress. Less stress, more happy. So... um. So if those of you guys that follow me on Snapchat, if you are interested in any healthy recipes, find me on Snapchat and uh, ask. You want breakfast ideas? You want lunch ideas? You want smoothie ideas? You want dinner ideas? Just hit me up on Snapchat. I'll do a, I can do a story um, either that day or the next day of stuff that I'm, that I'm making for myself and for my family. And it'll make it a little bit easier because you're, you're, getting, you're getetting a lot of information right now. And... Um, I want to make this easy on you. And I've already done a lot of this work and and kind of gotten this knowledge. So if I can share that with you in an easier way and make it easier for you, we're all good. Um, okay, food stuff. We're not adding to the stress by, the, by what we eat. Now we can help kind of bring it down. And the ways you do that for me, and this works very effectively for, effectively for me, is sleep and meditation. Really, these are two different things, but if you are, a lot of times with stress comes from a lack of sleep. So I'm going to show you how to sleep better, but I'm also going to show you that there's just certain jobs, like again, like if you work that crazy 12-hour shift, there are certain jobs that, that it's really hard to get a full, you know, seven to nine hours of sleep, which is really what you should be which you should be shooting for. Seven to nine hours of good um, melatonin-rich recovery sleep. But if you have a job where, you know, you work, you know, 412s or 512s or whatever it is for a week, it's going to be a little harder on you. So meditation actually helps reduce um, symptoms of sleep deprivation, which is, I'm sure is going to help you too, because the less tired you are, the, uh, the more clear-headed you are, the less, the less things are going to bother you because you're able to put them in the right perspective. So sleep. There are two parts of sleep. There is the pre-sleep and there is the sleep sleep. Again, I'm not a doctor. These are not medical terms. You will not be able to search sleep sleep in, on Google or anything. So um, you're already stressed out, right? So even if you say, oh, I'm going to get nine hours of sleep, you're stressed out at work, you come home, you eat, you go to bed. Well, if you don't prep your sleep before that, so the sleep is for healing. And if you're releasing cortisol up until the time you sleep, it takes time for that to cool down and wear off. So even let's just say you even fall asleep. You're not producing melatonin for up to four hours after you've stopped producing cortisol. What that means is you are not getting good sleep for four hours. So let's say you only sleep six hours. Well, if you're not getting good good recovery sleep for four of those six hours, you're only getting two hours of good recovery sleep a night. That's not enough. Not even close. So what you do is there are um, uh, these things called uh, 
blue light blocking glasses. Now, what's blue light? Blue light's pretty much everything. Everything that produces light in your house, your phone, your TV, your computer, the lights, I mean, just the lights in your house, they give off blue light. So what you do is you get um, these things called, they're called blue light blocking glasses. Really all they are, and you can find super expensive kind if that's your, if that's your deal. Um, they look a little bit a little bit better, but if you're at home trying to get good sleep, you should, really shouldn't care what you look like anyways. Um, the ones I have are like six bucks off of uh, Amazon, and it's really, they're just orange glasses. That's it. So you see some, um, you'll see some, uh, you see some old men on walks with the orange glasses. That's pretty much the same thing. So they block out blue light. So you put those on a couple hours before you go to bed. So as you're going through, you know, your routine at night, you're making dinner or you're eating dinner or you're, you know, watching TV or whatever you do to relax. Um, you put the blue light blocking glasses on, cuts off cortisol to your brain. And then it so which means you'll be able to produce melatonin faster. Cut off cortisol, produce melatonin faster. Um, so you have the blue light blocking glasses on. Other things that you can do to help prep your sleep. Don't watch crazy stuff on TV. Like don't, there was, there was a couple of shows, like don't watch Dexter and then go to sleep. Don't watch um, The Sopranos and then go to sleep. Can you sleep? Yeah, this is not about actually falling asleep. This is about getting quality sleep. So prep your brain for, for, um, for good sleep by not filling it with crap before you go to bed. There's a study that says that the last 45 minutes of your day is processed seven times more during your sleep than any other thing during the day. So you have to think, what do I want to process seven times more than anything else? I'm assuming it's not people getting shot. I'm assuming it's not the news. I'm assuming it's not bad news. I'm assuming, so you really have to think about what you're putting in your brain before you before you go to bed. Um, also, uh, one thing that I've heard from many people who are who are sleep experts is um, they take a hot bath with Epsom salt um, like an hour before they go to bed. So Epsom salt, you know, you're in the hot bath, which is relaxing. You're laying in the tub. I mean, really, how can you be stressed out in a tub? So you lay in the tub. You have the Epsom salts pulling toxins out of your system. Um, let's say you're in there for like a half hour. You get out. You finish, you know, you brush your teeth, whatever, and you go to bed. And, and they're talking about like amazing sleep for that. So if you have time for that, cool. If you don't, which is understandable because you probably have, you know, you got a lot going on in your life. If you can't make the time, throw the blue light blocking glasses on, maybe read before you go to bed. We're going to talk about meditation in a minute. You should probably meditate before you go to bed. And that all just kind of brings the day down because that's what you're trying to do. You're stressed out at work. If you're stressed out at home, it's a whole other issue. You got like life things you got to work out. But if this is work coming home, this is uh, this is when you kind of you have to decompress. So you have to bring your day down and slowly get it to a point to where where you're good. So you leave the leave work at work, so you can have home at home. And sleep is a huge part of that. Um, and the better sleep you get, the more recovery you have. And really, you're taking you need to recover from today. So you can kick butt again tomorrow. And remember the cycle thing. So if you don't recover, you're going to wake up tired. You wake up tired, it's going to mess up that day too. So you have two days that are messed up. Get your sleep. Eat right, get your sleep, and things will be better. Um, so we've got the pre-sleep thing. Sleep, sleep. Black out your room. Like if you have lights coming in from the street, put uh, dark curtains up. Don't have... Like no light. Like I literally mean no light. Like not even the light from a clock. Not even a light from, like I had to cover, I sleep with a fan at night because I'm a hot sleeper. Um, Cover up the light on the fan because you're, even though your eyes are closed and you can have earplugs in and you can have, you know, eye cover on and everything. If you, uh, your skin actually can take in light. I know that sounds crazy, but it's what, you know, it is what it is. So no light at all and it will help you stay in a deeper sleep you want to um if your house if it's noisy where you live get earplugs if you don't want earplugs get something that um get something that that makes like white noise like ocean noise or whatever like 
wind blowing through the trees, like like hippie type stuff. You know what I'm talking about. Um, um, keep your room under 70 degrees when you sleep because your body temperature is gonna um, is gonna rise when you sleep. I don't know if you guys wake up sweating your butt off. I do sometimes. So keep your keep your room temperature between like 65 and 70 degrees. Um, and I had to look this up. I think 70 degrees is like 21 or 22 degrees Celsius. And I apologize for my utter uh, Americanness. So if you're not an American and you're, and you're reading this, I'm sorry. It's We didn't learn it in school. So I had to type it in Google. So if it's not right, if 70 degrees is not 21 or 22 degrees Celsius, I don't know what to tell you. I'm sorry. Um, okay. So we got food. We have pre-sleep. We have sleep sleep. We wake up. We feel good. We recovered. We uh, we have healthy stuff in our system, so our body's not inflamed. We feel pretty amazing. So now is when we really jump on this on the stress, and we do it by using uh, meditation. And you have to get past whatever your preconceived notions are about meditation, because it just works. And if you're stressed out. You're looking for stuff that works. I'm assuming you're in a position where you're willing to kind of try whatever. Try this. Now you're going, how in the hell am I supposed to meditate? I don't know anything about meditation. You know, I don't even know where to start. So I'm going to give you three places to go that make it super easy. Two are an app. Two are an app. One is a, a website. And actually, before I tell you that... Um, what you do, what your body is doing when you meditate is, is, um, give me a second. Um, so what you're doing when you meditate is you're basically putting your mind into a state that is kind of like your pre-sleep state. So when you first lay down and you have, uh, you know, like the 10 minutes or five minutes before you fall asleep, um, that's what meditation does. Meditation basically puts you in like, like your, your sleep, but not really sleep. So it's like a, it's like a power nap. So what this does is this, this activates your, your parasympathetic nervous system and it allows, puts your body into a state of basically of recovery. So you're able to, if you meditate, and I suggest meditating the first thing in the morning. And if you have a break, if like, this depends on your level of stress. So first thing in the morning, if you have a break at work, you're having a rough day, or even if you're not having a rough day, just to make sure the rest of your day goes well, this only takes 10 to 20 minutes a day. 10 or 15 minutes can change your whole day. So you meditate right when you get up, 10 or 15 minutes, wake up 10 or 15 minutes earlier, a break at work, go find some place, meditate for 10 or 15 minutes, and then before you go to bed, and I promise you, it'll take a minute to get used to, but I, I guarantee day one, you'll feel better. And you'll really feel good after you do this for a week or two. And and what it allows you to do is it sl just slows everything down. So it's like a power nap without really napping, which then, like I remember I said, it can help um, offset sleep deprivation, like the what happens when you when you don't get enough sleep, like how you feel, your irritability, all those things. This helps offset that. So if you got a crazy week, you have a crazy, you know, you work four twelves or you work five twelves or whatever it is, um, throw this in throughout your day. And it will help actually, uh, it gives your, gives your mind rest, which then gives your body rest, which then allows you to, to um, deal with the stress a little bit better. So uh, I told you three places to go. Two, two are an app. The first app is called Calm, C-A-L-M. The second app is called Headspace. These will basically, you plug your, you get your smartphone, you download the app. It's a couple bucks. I don't know how much. Um, plug it in. And it will 10 minute meditation. It guides you through it from start to finish. You don't have to do any thinking. In fact, you're not supposed to do thinking. You're meditating. You're in the moment. You're just remaining calm. Guides you right through it. My sister uses it. She has two uh, very young daughters. Things get a little hectic. Those of you that have kids out there, she uses it. They, when they go down for a nap, she throws it on. She says, it's been, it's been amazing. Um, the second place you can go to is uh, terabrock.com. She is a meditation expert. This is like what she does. And she has a whole section on her website um, of uh, guided meditations. So Tara Brock, 
Tara Brock. And I will, I'll have all this stuff in the, in the show notes. So you don't have to worry about, you know, remembering this or writing this down or spelling it wrong. Um, so once you get used, once you get used to meditating, so this all kind of builds on each other. And the more and more you meditate, the better you get at it to a point where when you find yourself in a stressful situation, you'll be able to just, even if it's just for a couple seconds, you'll be able to pull back, take a deep breath, just do like a five second little mini meditation and go on and you'll be shocked at how much easier situations are are to handle once you have some of these things in place. Um, as you're getting into this, you know, maybe it's not as easy. One thing that I use when I'm having a really um, when I'm having a really rough day, and this is this might be the hippiest thing I do. Um, I do positive self talk. So if you find yourself in a stressful situation, you're just starting this meditation stuff out. It, maybe it's not clicking right away. Maybe you're thinking about it too much. Just positive self talk. And you don't have to say this out loud unless you're super comfortable with yourself and you're okay with people looking at you as the person that talks to themselves. But just tell yourself when you get into a stressful situation, just close your eyes and just say, This is just a moment. This is just one incident. This isn't personal. This is just work or this is just business. I love myself. I know I'm doing a good job. Everything's okay. I'm not going to let. This work stressed me out. This is just work. I'm going to keep it separate from home. This is what I'm prepared for. This is why I eat right. This is why I take care of myself. This is why I meditate. I do those, do that for these specific scenarios. Uh, or I only have X amount of time before I'm going to go home and I can meditate and have a good meal and relax. So just use those things throughout the day that if, if maybe the deep breath is not working yet, Maybe the meditation stuff hasn't, um, you haven't fully grasped it yet. Positive self-talk is huge. Just tell yourself over and over again, like a mantra, everything's cool, everything's cool, everything's cool. Because your brain, your brain's funky. You can control your brain by what you put into it, by what you tell it. It's like um, when you're trying to discipline a kid and you're trying to get them not to do something, you don't tell them don't do X. You don't tell them whatever, don't throw a ball in the house because your brain can't imagine not doing something it only imagines doing something so when you say to your kid don't do this don't do that in their head they're picturing do this do that this is kind of the same thing here so you can train your brain to think the way that you want to you start telling yourself hey everything is cool your brain's gonna go hey it's all right body we cool we cool let's tone it down we're all creatures of habit and we're all creatures of conditioning so you can condition yourself to um to get through stuff like this i wrote a i wrote a um a blog on this called like the process of happiness just about how you set yourself up so even if you have a crappy morning like the worst morning ever you know that there's something that afternoon because you have this process in place you know there's something that afternoon that can um that's going to offset that whether it's for me a huge thing for me is is working out so i know okay today sucked it was rough whatever but i'm going to work out and i'm going to feel awesome afterwards and you just know there's something about being in a process that allows you to handle whatever comes up because you know you're doing all the right stuff. You know, you know that you are, um, you know that something that's going to make you feel good is just around the corner because you have a whole process in place. So even though you feel crappy now, because you know something's coming up and you know you're doing the right thing, it actually makes that whatever that situation is there makes it easier because you know you have it handled. You know you have things in place to, to take care of this stuff. Um, so we've dealt with nutrition, we've dealt with pre-sleep, sleep, sleep, we've dealt with uh, meditation. Now you have to audit your life and remove stress, remove people that piss you off. Now, unless you're planning on leaving your job and finding something else, you got to deal with the people at work that stress you out. Maybe deal with them differently. Just try to separate yourself from it so you're not... Um, you don't take it personally because it's not personal. It's, if, if somebody's a dick, it has nothing to do with you. They're just a dick. What are you going to do? So get yourself in the right mindset for that. Um, if it's family, you know, we're, you know, we're all kind of, uh, you know, we don't choose our families. Our families choose us. So you're going to have to deal with that too. But everybody else, who do you want to spend your time with? If somebody stresses you out, if you don't, if somebody doesn't make you happy hanging out with them, if somebody irritates you on your days off, on your free time, don't spend time with them. Maybe you have to have some difficult conversations. 
or maybe you just have to not call back, you know, don't respond and maybe they'll get the picture. But, but don't surround yourself with people that irritate you because like James Altucher says, you're the product of like the five people you surround yourself with. So who do you want to surround yourself with? You want to surround yourself with smart, loving, caring people that make you happy. So do that. Don't, don't sell yourself short by spending your free time with assholes, you know? I don't know how to put it else. So, so you got to remove the stress from your life. Things that are stressing you out, get them out. Now, meditation is going to help. The sleep's going to help. The food's going to help. But you got to start auditing your life and pull the things out that, that, um, that, that don't make you feel good. Um, so like I said, I'm going to link to everything in the show notes. Um, if you have any other questions, I didn't want to, this is already pushing 40 minutes and I don't like to go super long, but this is a huge topic. So I'm actually going to take, I took these notes because it was so big. I took so many notes. I'm actually going to put a blog up. So I'll even link to the blog with all this information in it. I'm a blink. I'll have all the links, the blog, everything. If you have any other questions, please find me on Snapchat, find me on Twitter. I'm going to have all the links in the show notes to everything else, whatever, whatever you're comfortable in, in, uh, whatever medium you're comfortable finding me, find me. This is designed to help you guys in a space where, you know, I didn't have, didn't necessarily feel like I had the help. This is designed to help you. So if what I'm, what I'm giving you is not helping you or not helping you enough, or you have more questions, find me. I'll be happy to, to sit down and shoot back, shoot back emails with you. I'll be happy to Skype, whatever, whatever you're comfortable with, I'm comfortable with. I'm here to help. See you guys next time. And she was like, who? And he was like, nah. And we was like, what? Go ahead, go, go.